Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat Live, Thursday nights at 9 p.m. in the Thunderdome. Joining me this week, as always, it's the lovely and beautiful Ian Gibson. Is this really episode 94? Oh, my yeah. God. I've I've honestly, you know, the things where you're doing the intro, but I know I'm on camera and I feel like I should do something like smile or wave. I'm running yeah. out. I'm running, running out, of out. Things over here. Running I'm out so of sorry for you. You know, I mean, 94 Fine. more episodes than viewers at this point. Lifetime. Uh, also joining us this week, <laughs> Jake Terrio of Subpixel fame. That's me. Uh, here fixing typos and banging type hose. <laughs> tight, tight, hose. tight hose. Damn it! That was right God. there. God, sorry. You can't it's even so be. Hard. You can't even be improper. Let's, correct. Let's do I don't know if that's entirely accurate. Oh, thank you. Hey, sorry, everybody. I'm, welcome I'm putting in my information <laughs> into the, into the God, spirit. Damn it, we gotta do what? it again. <laughs> Jake's booking a flight. Don't. Your last name is Terrio, not Tight Hose. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to make sure I spell it right. So it matches my heckin' driver's <laughs> license. Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode, it's episode 94. Jake's tight hoes are going good. Uh, Ian's here, I'm here, we're ready to talk about video games. Holy moly me oh my. Lots of news this week, lots of things to do this week, so we're going to get right into it and talk about the games we've been playing this week. And Ian Gibson, I would like to hear from Hi. you first. Hello, hello is the uh, intro song ever gonna never. It's not gonna. It's not gonna end. Anyways, I've been playing a game that. Uh, look, I'm just gonna say it right here and now. It's going on the game of the year list. Uh, Tiny Kin. It's out for Game Pass. Uh, Reichert, Dan Reichert, Jeff Grubb, Bacalar, some other people just could not stop talking about this game. And I think even Dan Reichert said he finished the game and immediately started another playthrough. And I was like, God damn it, this game's on Game Pass. I guess I have to give this a shot um, on my never ending quest to unseat Elden Ring as the default game of the year. <laughs> and um, it turns out this game's fantastic. So Tiny Kin, look, I have never played a Pikmin game, but I believe Tiny Kin is a Pikmin game. Uh, and let me state why it is a 3D platformer. Uh, and you have little bros that you're collecting. They're called little tiny kins. There's four or five different types. Each of them does something unique. Like one of them lifts or push, pushes heavy things. Uh, another one they stack on top of each other to make like a platform that you can climb and jump off of. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one like transfers electricity. And so you're going through this like 3D platform environment. But you're tiny. So the whole thing is set in a house. Like you're probably the size of... I think you're about the size of like a stink bug, maybe, because there are like stink bugs in the game and stuff. So you're pretty small. You know, what would that be? I don't know. Maybe like maybe a centimeter tall. Maybe a little bit more than that. I don't know. It plays with yeah. scale a, a little bit, not like in a, oh, you're going to be giant. You're going to be small. But just in like things are a scale that makes sense for the game. But anyway, so you're going around this house. There's like a kitchen, a bathroom. It's just a fantastic 3D platformer. You know, I'm I'm typically not a fan of 3D platformers because a lot of them are just mediocre, quite frankly. But mm -hmm. there are fantastic ones like Super Mario Odyssey. That's the one that leaps out to me. That's probably the, the latest one I played that I really, really loved. Um, and that's what this game, I don't want to say this game reminds me a lot of that, but like the level design and the mechanical design is right there. Like you you go in a room and you see all, all, there's so many different paths you can go and you see like a dresser and you're like, okay, I can go in the bottom of the dresser, but then I'm gonna have to go over here and jump up a rope and I'm gonna have to go over here. And I just couldn't stop playing this game. I was playing it in like two hour chunks at a time, like getting off work, go to the couch, just zone out for two hours and play this game. It's fantastic. The way they parcel it out, there's basically different rooms of the house and each room to completely finish the room, like the main objectives and all the side objectives probably takes you 45 to 60 minutes per room. And it's just mm -hmm. so much fun. Um, it it looks looks pretty good. Like it's not an incredible next gen game, but it's stylish. It's very cutesy. It's a lot of fun. It runs really well. There are a couple like areas, like literally small areas in the maps where it would chug a little bit. But other than that, it looked fantastic and ran well. Just so much gameplay variety, just all sorts of like cutesy little humor where they're like dropping references and stuff. 
uh, like there was a Michael Schumacher, Fernando Alonso uh, F1 reference. And there was um, there were some other references that I kept getting. I can't remember, but they were they were like pop culture references, but they're like nicely written in because basically as you're running around, there's all these little insects and you talk to the insects and they're like, oh, no, you got to help me. You know, like somebody took my ticket, you know, and you're like, I got to go find the ticket. And you and the tickets like up on a uh, on a bookcase up there. So then you got to like find your way up there. And then like the ticket is heavy. So then you're like you have to have enough tiny kin to like lift the ticket. But the ticket, the tiny kin, they can't jump or fly or float like you can. So uh, you have to like build a path. So you have to like push things down in the correct way so that they have a flat slope to go all the way down. And it's just all sorts of little things like that. Like none of the puzzles are difficult, but they're so super satisfying. And it's just so much fun, like exploring the environment because it's, I don't know, it's kind of, it, it kind of does the Dark Souls thing where you explore an environment a little bit and then you unlock a ladder or a rope and it drops down and now you have shortcuts. So you're starting to mm -hmm. open all these shortcuts around. And it just has these like, I wouldn't call them super, I wouldn't really call them intricate levels. Maybe intricate, but not super intricate. But the idea is like pretty much anywhere you go in the level, there's going to be a little corner. There's going to be a little pocket. You know, like you go in a briefcase and you're like, oh, this is, I mean, a bookcase. And you're like, oh, this is just a bookcase. And you're like, oh, no, wait, there's a path around these books. And oh, my God, there's a little hidden nook, like hidden nook back here where this ant likes to live. And it has a little living room. And there's a little collectible for me to grab right there. And it's just. It's an incredible game. It's so much fun. It's like the perfect little indie game, kind of like Steam World Dig, where it's just like, hey, we're we're just going to make a game. It's this style. We're indie, so it's going to be like six to ten hours max. I think I finished it in about six hours. Mm -hmm. But we are going to blow the sweet bejesus out of this game. You know, we're going to have like five or six different mechanics. Each of those mechanics is going to be fully fleshed out and evolved in a way, and we're really going to explore that, and we're going to have like... We're not going to have a lot in the game, but every single piece of it is like very finely crafted and detailed and uh, intricate. And like, there's just so much there for, for you to enjoy and explore. That's Tiny Kit. It's on the game of the year list. I, I can't wait for you guys to play it. It's fantastic. And it's on Game Pass. Y'all got to check it out. Cool. Yeah, it'll be exciting to play a game that is not as good as Elden Ring, but it'll, it'll be there. It's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good, honestly. Uh, um. Can I just ask a question, Will? What? What is what is Pikmin? Like, what is I? I know what it looks like. I know I know what the promotional art looks like. Is it two D or three D? Like, I don't I I don't know what that game actually is. Could you describe it to me real quick? Uh, it's three D. Okay, that's all I know. I thought you played it recently. You piece of shit. I have never played Pikmin. No, I bought it and I booted it up, but I have yet to actually uh, was it play Karen it. playing it recently? I feel like I Karen feel like played was it talking recently. about it. Um, oh, and you didn't look at it and see it. No, because I was fucking playing my own game. <laughs> what do you mean? You're this like bullshit, it's three D. Got it right you here. Like, you like whistle to have them all come over. Do you want me to get Karen to explain it to you? Do, and and the colors have different like yes, skills the colors and have strengths. different uh, skills and stuff. You pick up like these little things and carry them around. You can fight bugs. You use them to kill things. Uh, and it's it's you have thirty days to get off the planet, so you do different okay. things every day, and you have to get all your guys. You have to finish the mission and get all your guys back to the ship by nighttime every night, okay. and then you like blast off and like hang out in the atmosphere or something, and then you land again. Um, Damn. I may have to play Pikmin because I really like Tinykin and it sounds very similar to Pikmin. Yeah, I, I want to play it too. Um, I had disassembled the GameCube setup because it was on our dining room table. And the version that I have digitally on the Wii U is the uh -huh. Wii version. And I really didn't want to play that. So I think I may just play it on my Steam Deck. What's wrong with the Wii version? Is it is it the graphics or is it the controls? It's motion controls, and I didn't oh, feel like setting that all up. you can't use a gamepad with it? No. Uh, so I think I'm just going to... I have the Wii U oh. stuff set up on my Steam Deck, so I might just... Or the Wii stuff uh, and the yeah. GameCube stuff, so I may just toss it on there. Um, That's cool. To get that going. Anyway, shut up. I got another game to talk about. Okay. Um, This game is not going on the game of the year list. Because it's too damn early. This game is called Total Conflict Resistance. Um, I streamed this on I streamed this on Tuesday. It was like incredible stream. Like 
there was probably like 60 plus people there. We were all having so much fun. The developers yeah. dropped by. Will was there. Jake was there. I'm glad you guys stopped by. It was a fantastic time. It was great. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's kind of chill when you have a stream and there's and it's just you solo and nobody shows up because you're just like, <laughs> maybe I'll just <laughs> did pay you attention even stream? to this game for three minutes. <laughs> I, I think I did. <laughs> Looked like I did. Um, anyways, uh, look, I'm going to be honest with you. This is another one of those uh uh tiktok things where it, it's not even like a tiktok trend or anything i just saw it on tiktok and it was one of those channels where this gamer's like hey guys i want to tell you about this really cool game i've been enjoying called total conflict resistance and it's like this is clearly a paid advertisement like like i don't know for certain but it's the way Ray he's presenting <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like the way he's presented is like, come on. But then he started showing gameplay and he started talking about what this game is. And I was like, you motherfucker, I don't care if this is an ad. Like, I've got to try this out. And um, I think literally the easiest way to describe it is um, there's two ways to describe it, right? One way is it's 4X plus RTS plus FPS. And the other Whoa. way to describe it is that it's it's a modern, slightly more complicated mountain blade um so basically what i mean by that is that there's kind of three different elements of the game <clears throat> i'll start at the macro level the macro level is kind of like mountain blade or civ or total war where you basically have a map you have armies on the map and you have cities that you control and you can decide like hey this city is producing this and this army is going to move between this city and that city and to like a sort of mountain blade element you can like control the supplies of your army and be like this army has enough food for 20 days etc and you're moving them around the map and you have a country surrounded by all these other countries just like made up eastern european countries um Slovak. but then there's an like rts georgia yes yes <laughs> actually i was looking at the names he did a very good job of coming up with fake eastern european names it was very well done uh and then the crazy thing is uh i didn't realize this but until I got into a battle scene, all the leaders have portraits. And if I remember correctly, I think they are portraits of like they're real portraits. It's not it's not art. I, I'm assuming it's just stock images, but it looks like it looks like generic ass 1991 four star general soon to be war criminal from Eastern <laughs> Europe. And I was like, that's a cool touch. That's a really cool touch. Um, but anyway, so then when your armies are moving around, um, and you start to get into wars with your neighboring nations, you basically either go to their town or the, or the armies meet on the map, kind of like Mountain Blade or Total War. And then mm -hmm. it goes to the combat. But the combat is a mix between RTS and FPS. So you have your units, which are like your squads that are from the, the army. And some of them are APC, some of them are tanks, some of them are just squads of infantry. And from the map... Uh, you kind of have like a 3D RTS view. So you can be like, hey, you go here, you go here, you attack. Um, but then any of those units, you can click on the unit and you can control that unit and it drops you into first person. And then at that point on, you're playing like an FPS. So you're kind of like, oh, this squad is on the flank. I'm going to play as them and I'm going to push forward with them a bit. Or like, hey, this gotcha. squad has an APC and they're not in the right. They just, they, they're they in a really good spot. So let me take over them and like manually fire. And honestly... Like, again, this, this game's very, it's not even an early access yet. This is just a free demo on Steam called Total Conflict Resistance. As far as I can tell, nobody was playing it except for me and this other TikToker. And it's, and it's, it feels like a vertical slice. It feels it like an scary. E3 demo. <laughs> it feels like an E3 demo where they implemented like the bare minimum of each of these systems just to get it working. Mm -hmm. But even giving that, playing it with with just the like half the mechanics were like hey at some point you're going to choose what buildings go in which town but you were not going to let you do that right now and like you can't pick which member of the squad you join it just drops you in a random member of the squad stuff like that even that bare minimum i was like holy shit there's something here because like it's it's so cool like other games have done that concept before of like rts meets fps but this just does it really well because the, like it actually looks really graphically good and the FPS feels pretty good. And it was it was this idea of like I I had science research going and I researched uniforms. Once I unlocked that, then I customized the, my, the uniforms of my guys so they look like white American CIA contractors, you know, khaki pants, blue dress shirts and a vest and a baseball cap. 
And then when I went into combat, I just have a hundred like CIA looking <laughs> motherfuckers running through the woods, right? And then it was one of those things where like one of my squads, I recruited a bunch of squads. Like I had a battalion that was like 70 people and I recruited like 30 more people. And I was like, hell yeah, you guys get it. And then I and then I gave them weapons. And then we went to battle and like we started getting wiped out and I swapped to one of those squads and I was like, why don't we only have a fucking pistol? And then I was like, oh shit, it's because I didn't give him any good weapons. I just created a <laughs> squad from literally like the civilians of this city and they just have a pistol by default and I forgot to manufacture and provide them weapons. And I was just like, God damn it. You know, it's like, like it's starting to work together. And, and, and the, the other thing that I'll talk about real quick is the enemy AI, like Will, you've played Mountain Blade, right? Yeah, I prefer Ocean Blade. Ocean Blade, uh, <laughs> like the AI in Mountain Blade is not good, right? It's not very good. Yeah, it's it's exploitable. Yes, and and do you remember um, what was that? What was wasn't it called like Gorilla Gorilla Total Warfare or something? <laughs> Which was yeah. it was this came out like two three years ago, and it was literally just. It was just we're going to make a Mountain Blade clone, but it's with guns in the in the modern era. That one had really bad AI, too. Like, literally, you'd look across the map and you'd see all 40 enemy players running towards you in a straight line. It was just like, yeah. you idiots. This I don't know how, but this game actually has pretty good AI, again, for being bare bones rudimentary. Like, like I um, I tried to attack this town and I had like twice as many forces as the uh, as the enemy. And I had like five APCs. And like I start the match and I have this APC. I'm like, go towards the town. And it starts driving towards the town. And all of a sudden I hear and then boom. And the APC just fucking goes up. And I see like 10 bodies fly through the air because the APC <laughs> hadn't unloaded yet. And I'm like, no, that's like my I only had like three APCs in my entire army, and now it's gone. And it's because like I'd accidentally like gone into like a semi-kill zone and an enemy RPG had taken me out. And I was like, you motherfucker. And the enemy starts like 10 minutes into a match. I open the map and all of a sudden I'm like why is there three fucking enemy squads on my left flank going through these woods? Like they didn't come at me directly. They flanked. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. Like again, this game, it needs about two year, two more years on it. Yeah. But this is one of those instances where you find a game very early and it's not quite there enough to play, but this could be something fantastic. And I I'm talking about it so much because this game has like nothing on steam. There's no reviews. Nobody's playing it. So you absolutely should go out and try Total Conflict Resistance demo. It's got some really interesting stuff on it. At a bare minimum, if you're barely even interested, go wishlist, because I know wishlisting on Steam actually does a lot for the algorithm. So this this game is something to keep an eye on, and I'm screaming about it because, honestly, my biggest fear is that it just goes away because it it doesn't get enough attention. You guys I'm have any, go, any games like that? Currently? Right now. Just in history, where you feel like you found something very, very good, but it was small, and then it just never, never got the attention it needed to blossom. There was something recently, I feel, but now even I have forgotten it. Yeah, wow. I, I feel like I have a handful of those. There was one, like, something craft, Minecraft, or something like that. that oh, was, no. wait, no, for a long time, um, it was routine that um, the... I've never even heard of it. It just had a, a new reveal trailer, um, like within oh, the, the past six the months or so. One, right? Yeah, it's on the moon, but the, their first gotcha. trailer was back in like 2014 or something. Yeah. Because I remember yep. hearing about it because. Or wait, when did Doom. 2016. That's when yeah. Doom. Yeah, Doom yeah. with Mick Gordon's soundtrack came out. Because I know that Mick Gordon was doing the score for it. And so I was like, oh. That seems interesting, um, but then there was just nothing for like three or four years, um, yeah. and then they finally had a new trailer. So we'll see. What uh, I will say the the one I have was which did come out is I remember following the devs of Stray years ago uh, uh -huh. when they fr yeah. I I like someone said something about Kowloon Walled City and I was like deep into looking it up and then that appeared in one of the Google searches. And I like similar, yeah. Saw the thing, and then followed them. And then when they reappeared later, I went and looked, and someone was like, "Oh, you can see when they stopped talking about it because that's when Sony bought them. Like you yeah, could trace yeah. it backwards." 
it's uh, similar to to roller drum how yeah you know i saw that you tweet years ago existed. and then and then roller drum came out i was like that looks just like that other game and then i looked it up and i was like it was it was that indie dev posting like crazy early weird concept stuff wait there is also i'm gonna look it up and i'm probably gonna if it's it's grid something it was like turn-based strategy racing no it was um oh i grid I was in the title about. but i can't did you grid play that sport that no. fmv racing game yet ian i did i i don't know if i talked about it the racing was not interesting enough to keep me enthralled, but honestly, the FMV parts were actually kind of enthralling. They were actually well done. They they only I, had a little bit of cheese on them. That's I almost downloaded it because I was like, I could maybe do this. You get ten hours free uh, with with Game Pass on it. Um. So, anyways, while Jake's looking that up, wish list that game. I you know honestly, look, I'm giving you homework. I don't give a shit who you are. I don't care if you're interested or not. Go wishlist that game because it's a dev that has a dream and what he's done so far is incredible. So give him the Steam wishlist so that boosts him a bit in the Steam ecosystem. What's um, the name of the game again? Total Conflict Resistance. Uh, and you can find that on Steam. Um, the other game I've been playing, I've only played about an hour of this so far, so I won't talk about it too much. Just came out today. Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. This is the sequel to the greatest XCOM game of all time. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And... Um, Again, I'm only an hour in. A couple things. Number one, it feels good to be back. I forgot how great and unique and exciting and dynamic um, the combat in this game is, turn-based combat. It's just different. They're just doing a lot of stuff different. Number two, I forgot how weird it is to be in a Nintendo world, but it's all like it's like half Nintendo, half But he Ubisoft. has a gun. But it, but that's the thing is that it's it's not even just like the literals of like he has a gun. There's rabbits. It's just how it feels and how it's designed and how it's written. It literally feels like half the time you're like, oh, that's a Nintendo thing, and then half the time you're like, that's a Ubisoft thing, you know. So it's like <laughs> it's a weird mix between the two. And there's some areas I want it to be a little bit more Nintendo, because um, Ubisoft sucks. Uh, but the Failed. third thing, the thing that's surprising me the most, I saw people talk about this in the reviews, but again only an hour in there actually is a lot different in this sequel than the original like i feel like sequels are usually 95 percent the same thing and then the five percent is like an extra mechanic slash new content in the same vein as the original but there's actually a lot of different mechanics they've changed a lot of things around for better uh, so far it feels like for better and that just feels pretty cool so far to be playing it and realize like oh, this is an actual sequel. Like, there is a good difference here, which is pretty rare when I think about it. Most sequels are just like, especially the second game, are just like more of the same, whereas this is like, no, we're we're taking some swings, we're mixing things up, we're changing a lot of stuff. So I'm really having fun with it. Um, uh, fuck you, Will. Jake, tell me about Railgrade. Oh, yeah, so Railgrade... <laughs> my show. Um, Railgrade is interesting when my dog freaks out. Um... I got it. You know, I like trains. I thought an interesting kind of sci-fi setting. You're, you know, you're, you're basically tasked with going to this colony that its infrastructure has totally fallen apart and you have to reconnect everything. Um, and it's, it's interesting, you know, the management elements. I like the designs of the trains and whatnot, but at some point I think maybe I had put this in the discord community chat it has a little bit of like an idle game vibe to it because okay. it's got a its score its scoring is based on score? how quickly you beat the mission and you'll get a number of vouchers at the end of the level to buy you know new trains and upgrades and stuff um based on how quickly you do it and it's ranked s s a b c um yeah uh but because it's then timed there's no fast forward you can't um, like once you get to a certain point where you're like, okay, now I just need to let it do its thing for a little bit. You can't. So you have to just kind of like, I've sometimes I've literally had the switch and I've just kind of set it down and gone and done something else Ugh. for 10 or 15 minutes. And then I come back. Man, that's um, tough. so it's, it's, that's an interesting textural element that I understand from like a design perspective. They're like, it's, you know, here's how we rank it. Here's whatever but I would like a fast forward. Um, 
I think I last I checked, I'm like 65% of the way through the campaign, but I haven't touched it in a couple of days. So I don't know if I'll roll credits on it or not. Um, I, if it's on sale, pick it up or if it ends up on game pass or something. Um, cause mm-hmm. it is, it's a novelty. Okay. It's neat. Um, but then another kind of novel little game I've been playing was paradise marsh, um, which is a super indie title where, um, all of the stars have fallen out of the sky and you have to catch little bugs and animals in a marsh and shoot them back up into the sky to form their constellations. Um, it's that's it. It's got some interesting kind of like impressionistic elements. It's the writing is interesting. The way they characterize all the little animals. Um, you like you catch some frogs, catch a couple of dragonflies, some butterflies. Um, but I played it for a couple hours, and I don't know if I'm gonna hop back into it. Um, this is neat, and it, the sound design was by Disaster Piece, but it's not. It doesn't have like a traditional musical score. It's just everything kind of makes fun little sounds when you interact with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can do certain puzzles and get like like a you know a tuna can piano or a little pan flute and you can play music as you wander around. Um, yeah, so another one that it, I played it on Switch. If it's on sale, maybe pick it up. A um, couple bucks. Uh, then I played Proteus on Game Pass, which is very obviously they have they had no higher goals than just being a Doom clone, a super polished doom clone um nice music interesting art but at some point i'm like i've already played this game because i've played doom and i can appreciate the polish on this one but yeah it's it's just doom um and then i played lego brick tales which i was very excited for Mm -hmm. i liked all Mm -hmm. the kind of seeing all the stuff leading up to it and i played a couple hours of it and it's fine. Um, it's a little. Will Will was saying he could see its open endedness being a detriment in the long run, and I was actually uh, upset it wasn't open ended enough. Oh, um, interesting. So, like, they give all the little building puzzles. You go into the little build mode, and they give you a little uh, a curated selection of bricks. Um, which I'm like, okay, that makes sense. They're not giving you, you know, the whole smorgasbord of every single, because that's then just like, that's, that's you're going to s- spend 20 hours being like, ooh, let me make it absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. But my issue then was on some puzzles, um, they give you groups of bricks that have already been assembled, where then that removes some of the, um, like the, the choice in my mind because i can see a group of bricks that they've you know built and i can be like well there's a very specific place it wants me to put this gotcha so um, so you're pro choice the game is not <laughs> yes um Jesus. where i just like it was just a little frustrating of being like it, it they, they couched it in all this like the pr was all you know you know build yeah, you know it's it's your. And I'm like, but it's not really. You're giving me a couple of like at a couple of points. You're like, I have to do it this way. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so I did like I'm not sure how many like levels in total there are. I did the opening forest one, which I don't know if that was the whole demo or not. And then I did a little bit of the desert that's after it. Waffle, come here. Um, woo, woo, woo. but um. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm going to hop back into it cuz it's also at some point there's only so many puzzles you can like fabricate where I'm like okay, how many different kinds of bridges can I build? <laughs> um where then I was like, well, you know, I've already done a couple of bridges. I'd like to do something else. <laughs> um but it was neat. Like the hub area is like an amusement park that you're trying to rebuild. And after I got out of the forest level, it um, was like, oh, well, now we we rebuilt this amusement park ride, but you get to make the cars for it. And I'm like, that's kind of neat. Um, but then I couldn't ride it, which was 
dumb. Fuck. Unless I was an idiot, and maybe there was a button where I could do that, and I just didn't notice it. Um, yeah. This feels like another instance of, like, a really cool idea, but then, like, they put in place, like, AAA game guide rails where they're like we can't have it too much like we've got to we've got to kind of handhold them a bit we can't give them too much freedom because that's going to induce too much chaos kind of like like will and i played um lego worlds Mm -hmm, we had we had that as like literally a 2 a.m game on extra life because we're like hearing really good things about this This is going to be a lot of fun we're going to dick around with this in the middle of the night it's going to keep us up and we played that for what 45 minutes and ditched it because like the building wasn't great the world wasn't great the controls felt bad and it was just like just give me the fuck like like literally that's why roblox started because they were like we're gonna have the balls to make the lego multiplayer game that lego can't make where you Mm -hmm. can build stuff and then of course they went off in a different direction but like there's a fantastic thing you could do there and you see that everywhere you see that in scrap mechanic you see that in gary's mod all these like sandbox games that hit it big because they open it up and they let you do crazy stuff and i would love for lego to do that yeah because i i I played lego worlds too and i i appreciate this as you know lego still kind of they were never a video game company. They got into video games basically because of market pressure back in the 90s where they're like, we'll probably go bankrupt if we don't try to get into interactive media. Um, and I appreciate this as a kind of, you know, trying something new, playing with the formula. Um, it's not, you know, another third person action adventure game set in a Lego themed universe. Um but um, yeah, I think they still haven't quite found their their perfect distillation of the Lego experience yeah. in a digital form. Um, and I'm not I'm not ever sure. I, I don't know if that's possible um, with as open ended as Lego bricks. You know, the physical act of you know getting through yeah. a box of legos and doing what you want like what's the what's like what's the end game of that if it's because lego worlds was essentially that it was really just building there wasn't like there were quests but, but even the but um, even the building like like it was like their form of minecraft in a way yeah but the third I, I, person you know, was not a good pick yeah. You know, um, I don't I, I don't support this. I hate this. But honestly, mm. if Lego just came out and made a triple A Minecraft clone that was just Minecraft, but all based on Legos and Lego bricks, etc. I'd be like, heck, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, 100 percent. Like, I don't appreciate that you copied it, but you know what? It works. Do it. I'm on board. It feels like they keep trying to be a little bit. It feels like they keep trying to do their own thing. Mm-hmm. And as much as I appreciate that, they're they're doing it in a way that makes it more vanilla and boring. Mm-hmm. And it's like no man just there are tried and true methods that lego would absolutely slot in just make scrap mechanic lego you know do do like the mindstorms next lego game and it's basically just scrap mechanic you know lego racers three yes do or do like banjo kazooie nuts and bolts but Mm -hmm. it's lego in its lego world you know do forza horizon but it's lego racers and yeah and kind of have a fun power-up system and you get to build your own cars but you've also got the licensing agreements there with audi and mclaren and ford and aston martin and bugatti and mercedes so you can be like okay yeah that formula is there and it feels like they're not it almost in a way it almost feels like they're trying to be a bit too a24 about this where they're like no (laughs) we gotta do this like we gotta do this the artsy right way and it's like look i appreciate that but you gotta make the big hits too because they're so easy for you to make yeah well lego lego builder's journey the development title was lego art house that was like their in-house title yeah when they were developing it yeah but anyways yeah so that's um, what i've been playing yeah thanks 36 minutes into Um, this podcast Will, look, I'm looking through this list, and quite frankly, there's only one on here that I want to hear about because I was literally looking at this yesterday and thinking about buying it. Tell me about the case of the Golden Idol. Uh, I have it's sitting in my cart because I need to buy it. Uh, case of the Golden Idol is a uh, video game that is on the Steam platform, if you've ever heard of it. It is, as I have written here, a 2D Return of the Obra Dinn for the Commodore 64. Um, it, in terms of art style, right? In terms of art style, you are looking at a screen. Uh, I, I played the demo. I played the first case of the demo. It's just one screen. There's a guy who has... Uh, there's a guy standing on the cliff, and there's a guy in the water, and you're just looking at the different objects. 
you're getting everyone grabbing all the information you can from all the objects and then you're going to like your investigation screen where you're plugging in the names if you get it right it'll be like good job and then you solve the case and then move on it seems really fun and the first case even though it was super easy was like interesting it taught you very quickly how to do everything um you had to like look at the background of the place you're in to figure out where on the map you were which i thought was very nice. smart um so you could like Love plug it. all that in and then i there were three like sections you had to fill out i filled out two of them and it gave me the win so i don't think you have to solve all three it said i could stick around and finish solving it or i could move on to the next case so i think like if you really want 100 percent, you can do the whole case or you can get enough to like figure out who did it uh which i like because i feel like in Oberdin you need to figure out everything because it was an insurance thing but when you're solving yeah. a case, as for, as long as you get the guy who did it, you don't need to figure out all the like nitty gritty stuff. Um, so yeah, that is that is on Steam. Uh, the case of the Golden Idol, I think it's like twenty bucks right now. The demo has three cases in it. Yeah, as far as I could tell from the screen. So, um, so just to say, one of, the reason I got interested in it is because it was two things. Number one was um, a bunch of reviews. I think the reviews actually came out last week, but for some reason they didn't really hit my Twitter until yesterday. Like it didn't pop up and all of them are like nine out of 10, 10 out of 10. Like this is the greatest mystery game I've ever played. Like this is the evolution of point and click and all this other stuff. And I was like, Oh, what kind of, you know, again, I'm in a constant quest to DC to unseat Elden Ring as game of the year. So I'm, I'm on the hunt for game of the year candidates. And I of looked course. at the steam page and immediately I was like, I'm a fuck this aesthetic. This is some good shit. They made some it, strong choices here and I am on board with it. It is very deliciously visual. It's like uh Money Python growth. It's like the SpongeBob's zoomed in when they zoom in on a character yeah. in SpongeBob and they're oh, like hideous and super detailed. It's that yeah. but pixel art. But um, it's like but it's like it's like it's like Commodore 64 as yeah. you remember it, not as it actually looked. So like, as you remember, you're adding a lot more pixels and detail to the image that were actually there. And that's the art style of it. Um, I, you should buy this game so that I can yeah. play it. I think I'm going to buy it so you can play it. Uh, I was trying to see if it was Thank Steam you. Deck compatible. Um, Probably. I went to buy it on the Steam Deck and it didn't give me a warning. But I also, they usually say so... I couldn't tell. Um, there's also a, an indie showcase dream hack beyond going on right now. And if you're into weird indie games like me, I would highly recommend browsing through that because there's some weird shit uh, that just looks like fun. Uh, I'm a huge sucker for indie games uh, because Yummy. that's where all the good stuff is going on right now. Um, so yeah, that I literally played a little bit of the demo. I'm going to play more of it. The game I played the most this week is probably Deep Rock Galactic. The Halloween event came out. I just finished the assignment with Karen today. Uh, listen, I paid attention to your fucking shtick, so you pay attention to mine. I had new um, games, thank you very much. Yeah, fuck you. Fire Emblem, I got two missions left. Almost done. Score! How many, how many missions are in Fire Emblem? 20? Just curious. Uh, that sounds about right. If you right. do both... So I did Erica's path. If you go back and do Ephraim's... I don't think you can just choose to do his. I think you gotta play through the whole game again, but he has five different missions. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm not gonna fuck with in that game. Scorn, uh, we had a great stream with Zach from Save Data. Uh, please go watch that out. Halucha put plenty of clips in the Stream Clips channel. That game is so weird and interesting. And then we got to the combat portion and that wasn't great, but uh, we we birthed a child together. I left nice. him for dead. Uh, we talked a lot about flesh in the flesh world, and I pretty much concluded I w I don't I wouldn't be as scared if I woke woke up in the flesh world. Um, I so uh, my question is, everything I've seen of that game sounds and looks terrifying, but then seeing you play it, it didn't seem like it was that scary. It's not a scary game. It is a disturbing, grotesque game. In the same way that, like, Alien's not that scary. It's, like, kind of... Okay. It's more... So, I should say, Scorn is more horrifying than it is scary. 
There's no like jump okay. scares or anything like that. Um, gotcha. Yeah, it's more of like the atmosphere is disturbing and horrifying, and the like gross son we had is disgusting, and I hate him. Wean? No, not our son. The Me flesh toilet. Son. Whack. Well, we named oh. him Rhombus because he's a little slant, slant <laughs> like sideways. Um, so we named him Rhombus, Rombie. Uh, he was a cutie boy, uh, but he was all melted together. Uh, and he came in an egg. Well, he didn't come in an egg. He he came in an egg. <laughs> somebody came in an egg. Yeah, somebody came in an egg, and he was born. Um, yeah, so that Christ. game's weird. I'm not gonna play any more of it. But it was it was fun enough that Zach and I, you would have lasted five seconds. So I'm glad I did it with with Zach. But we played for like two and a half hours because we kept making flesh jokes, um, <laughs> which was pretty good. My favorite of That's his cool. was Luke Fleshwalker, and then. <laughs> And then his favorite was he asked me what in Star Wars they call jazz music jizz. So he said, what do they call it here? And I go, they still call it jizz. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good. Um, anyways, enjoy your flesh tunes. Secret of Monkey Island. I was looking for games to play on the Steam Deck uh, during the Save Data Steam Deck uh, podcast I was on. People kept talking about Monkey Island. So I went ahead and abused my powers and bought uh, five Monkey Island video games. The special edition of one, special edition of two, three, I think there's a four, and the brand new Monkey Island game. There was a big bundle on Fanatical. Um, so I bought all those. I am a little ways into uh, Secret of Monkey Island, which I believe is the first one. The special edition's great because you can flip it from modern graphics to the original pixel art at, at any time like Love during cutscenes, and so i like i'll find myself going back and forth because i'm not a, i'm not a huge fan of the new art style only because i like pixel art so much but like seeing how they back. like translated everything you know seeing how they Bye. translated everything uh is is really interesting uh the puzzles have been pretty good they they have a hint system in the new one uh that i don't mind uh so it's 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 nice i like it um it is a uh it's fun so i i can't imagine myself playing all of them within the next couple months i'm probably going to take some time between them uh but i can see what people are talking about when they're like oh, i love monkey island i played it as a kid you know um all that sort of stuff that sounds like fun yeah and then yeah case of the golden idol though blew that out of the water so i think i'm gonna <laughs> i think i might buy that and play it tonight um yeah, no, send I me your Steam I login. To, I need to finish Fire Emblem. Actually, I don't know if I need your Steam login. Are we still I'll family you know. sharing? But I think I, I think I reinstalled Steam and that wiped yeah. it. I'll check it out. I I'll see. I need out. to put you back on my computer. Um, you yeah, know, what? I could buy it under the sub Subpixel account. Yeah, you could do that. Actually, yeah, probably. Honestly, not. it seems like a game of the year contender, so that may be the best. It definitely does. Um, yeah. so those are the games I've been playing this week. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. And if there was, fuck it. Uh, we're moving on to the news. I'm going to hit the news button. Here we go. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up news? But now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you though. Unlike Factorio, Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. What? what? <clears throat> we got to start thinking of what our new news things are going to be. For I was just uh, thinking, can we go 100. on Fiverr? Can we go on Fiverr and just pay somebody like 40 bucks to just electro remix that? I was thinking of emailing that, that level up person, seeing what if they wanted to. Ciara? <laughs> Ciara, Ciara. Isn't that who's? Isn't that who I sings so. Level Up? Yeah, I'm gonna email her. What about the blue check? What about you the milkshake? Out? What about the milkshake? Is that Ciara that does the milkshake? I don't know what a milkshake is. Are we talking about like having milkshakes in her yard or something? Oh no, that's Beyonce, isn't it? No, I think that's. Ciara. I don't think so. Shakira, Shakira. It's Queen not Latifa. Shakira. Kanye. Anyways. Let's talk about the news. Let's talk about the news, folks. Kanye's buying the social media platform Ian uses. Uh, <laughs> that story 
is wild. I didn't know that was owned by Candace Owens' husband. She just pulled the what? grift of, of, yeah, she like indoctrinated Kanye and then has talked him in Dubai and their defunct social network. Damn. It's all by her interconnected. Like, Once like, you dip shit, a toe into that side of things, it's all just a tangled web. <laughs> I, mean, was, I thought she was stupid, but she's brilliant. <laughs> God damn. Anyways. Uh, can we sell subpixel to Kanye for an exorbitant <laughs> yeah. fee? We'll call it Q Pixel. <laughs> Why Q? That's how we get them interested. <laughs> we hook them in. I love letters, um, <laughs> especially ones with tails. <laughs> Um, Comcast pulls the plug on G4 TV, and then come back for Gamer Focus God. Network. Um. In a few years, there'll be a book about how not to make a comeback. Uh, they lasted longer than the Prime Minister of England. <laughs> not CISO. What was the Oh, other Quibi. 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 And the best part is to say Go90. Quibi. I guess go Ninety's not around anymore either. The best like, part at that giant bomb thing, Mike Mahardy showed up and Dan Riker said, how's that Quibi stuff going? <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. Oh, it was so oh my funny. God. Mike Mahardy had, uh, on, on Firescape uh, cast, he talked about it a little bit, and he was like, look, we all knew it was a stupid and it was going to be destroyed, but they were paying a lot of money. And so we were, like, literally everybody was just like, we're going to be here for the money, and then when it goes, we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, this is, look, I hate to be a pessimist, but everybody saw this coming, right? And, and yeah. there were a couple key things here. Number one, G4 TV, uh, they were always a bit of like the edgy gamer that has that mentality has gone away, right? It's out of vogue. It's actually like discouraged now post gamer gate. Mm -hmm. So you can't just bring back G4 TV as it was. Number two, uh, uh, cable TV is dying. It's, mm -hmm. it's going away. So the stupidest thing you could do right now is make a cable TV network, uh, especially one aimed at a generation that is not watching cable TV. And then number three, like the amount of money they were throwing at this, like when they spun this up and they started showing off, like this is the custom studio we built. We just hired like 150 plus people in my head. I'm looking at that going, you're throwing a whole lot of money at this thing that has like a like a 10 percent chance of six of lasting more than two years um just from the beginning it seemed like a bad idea a a am i crazy for thinking that i know, no, I know it, it sounds like hindsight 2020 yeah but absolutely i i didn't watch g4 tv in its prime but i knew of it and i always knew yeah. of it in the context of being kind of like a bro culture-y um like like rooster teeth adjacent in yeah. in my mind being not really familiar with either at the time um and so yeah when i heard it was coming back i was like it doesn't feel like the right era for this i'm not sure what the target demographic is um it doesn't mean that i didn't apply for an editorial position when it was Take all first money. announced but uh, um, yeah uh but no i was surprised that it was coming back and unsurprised when it was leaving again sure yeah. there's a lot of talented people there and i hope they land on their feet they uh, just from uh, the outside looking in it's just they were trying to do things the same way and instead of trying to use their brand to make new waves in what is happening yeah like they could have easily set up a giant bomb style uh chat and and video streaming on their own website also stream yes. to twitch also stream to youtube um like take over that market with your shows have programming on twitch so you're not relying on one person to stream eight hours a day you can be live 24 7 have old content go like there's so many options they could have gone with to make it work and just doing yeah. it the same old way um but so the like crazy the thing was decision. The crazy thing was like you could tell that they knew they couldn't do the same stuff as before. And and I I didn't watch any of the new G4 TV content because I, I don't want to say every time I try to, but every time I came across it, like 90 percent of it, from what I could tell, 90 percent of the original G4 TV content was literally 
this. They were like the new attack of the show looked like it was them sitting on a couch with a microphone on an arm in front of everybody, just reading the news and doing hot takes and conversation. It was literally a video podcast, yeah. but with so much fucking money behind it. Because again, they had a hundred plus employees. They had a custom studio. They're pumping it out to cable TV. And it's like, why are you spending that much fucking money on a video podcast when we're 50% of the way there, right? Like the only difference between us and them was they were in a studio with a lot of money and in person doing it and broadcasting the cable network. And it was like, how fucking stupid could you be? Like, there are better ways to do it. Like you said, you set up your own video or you go for some of these these targeted platforms like gas station TV or um, you guys know uh, Pluto TV, like the free TV mm-hmm. platform. So yeah. so we we watch it every now and then, because, mostly because there's an Iron Chef channel, which is fantastic. Um, there are gaming channels on there. I don't know if you guys have ever gone to them, but it's literally not. there's like a dozen gaming channels and it's basically two things. It's like ign videos that they've produced and put together on there where it's like hey here's our 30 minute playthrough review of whatever and then the other half of it is just literally youtubers putting their long form playthroughs onto these channels so they've sold hey here's my 20 part playthrough of minecraft no death and they've just sold it to some network that called minecraft tv that just plays that for 10 hours in a row and they're making bank on that. And not that they're rich, but they're making money on that. And and because people are watching that, because that's what people will pay for. And G4 TV is like, like there's a way to do it as like not flashy as it is, but they could have very easily made content like that for gas station TV, for game stops, for for Pluto TV, and then on the side had the, the Twitch live broadcast. A lot of their shows, like Attack of the Show, they were live broadcasting to Twitch as well as cable at the same time. It's just one of those things where they didn't necessarily have a terrible idea. They just went after the old way of doing it. And because of that, they had to spend, they felt obligated to spend a shitload of money. And that's what bankrupted them because they're fucking idiots. Yeah. And I think a lot of people in charge were used to spending large amounts of money because that's what you did 10, 15 years ago when you were setting that stuff up. Throw money at it. Yeah. And you don't have the same amount of money coming in to offset that. And if they had thrown that amount of money to just going to Twitch, they might might have had that that in the bag. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, look at look at there there are there are there are brands out there that spend millions of dollars per year, but they get more than that back. You know, Critical Role. Um what's what's the Dimension 20? They're the ones that do like game breakers and all that. It's a college humor one, right? I I I I can't remember if it's still in the college humor or if they broke away, but, but like they have like, I I guarantee you they have several dozen employees because they have sets, they have studios, they have makeup, they have good camera work. But again, they're going to a Twitch audience. They're going to their custom audience. You've got corridor digital. You have these, these companies that have been able to build these like really good media brands with really unique, interesting, good looking content and with dozens of staff. And they're able to support that and grow and profit beyond that. Because they know what they can do with a small budget. They make that budget work and they know how to work the content in their audience. And exactly like what you said, Will, G4 TV was the opposite is we're spinning up, we're spinning up a new cable channel. First of all, that's the problem. Second of all, we have to throw money at it, that money you're never going to get back, and we have to run it in a big budget style. And it just led to this like impossible hole that they're never going to dig themselves out of. So it's just like. We all saw it coming. I'm glad people got money out of it. Sessler, you know, whoever was involved with it. I'm, I hope you got some money and enjoyment out of it because that was just, that yeah. was a, that was a bad idea. Honestly, now that I mention it, I think College Humor is the, I mean, they started on, on YouTube and a website and yeah. stuff, but that is a good example of how to move that brand to today. Like they have a streaming service that people pay for and works. Yep. They put some of their shows on their YouTube channel. They hit the shorts and stuff all the time. They have a good schedule of content. They have good content. Um, they, they turn some of their content into free delayed podcasts. So if you want yeah. the video form, you got to subscribe, etc. That's the that's, way to do it. It's yeah, that's and, pers- and that's not crazy. It's not like it's not no. like they came up with that formula. It's not like they're the only ones doing that formula. There's there's plenty of people out there doing it, and 
it's exact. I, I hate to say it again, but it's exactly like what you said. It's old money, old ideas, and they thought they knew how to do it because they've launched. I launched Esquire TV. I launched Lifetime. I launched TLC, and it's like great. That shit don't work no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more I think about it, the more they should have literally just copied them. Because like, I exactly. watched Game Changer on YouTube, and when it ran out, I was like, I'll pay for a month of dropout and watch some more episodes. Like, yep, yep, uh, yeah. So G four shutting down or did shut down pulled the plug hey anyone out there needs a job i can't give you one but i hope you find a job um like anybody i don't want to say anybody from there but all those main talent man just go to twitch coast on that money for a yeah. while until you come up with something better yeah uh and if you were milking it good on you um yep. moving on here in the news uh, Silent Hill had a transmission. Uh, Silent Hill's transmission. Comcast pulls. What happened here? How did this happen? The link know. got a little messed up. What has happened? Can I look? Uh, I know we're running late. Can I just ask a question here? Oh, what do you? Want? Do any of you guys give a shit about Silent Hill? I just um, I'm you're... interested in the one that uh, No Code is developing and Annapurna is publishing because I have really enjoyed No Code's games so far. Which one's which one's that? Townfall. I don't know. The trailer okay. didn't tell me anything about what kind of game it might be, but if I know anything about No Code, it will be primarily user interface focused. Ooh, that sounds beep, like, that beep. sounds interesting. Yeah, they showed like a like a walkie talkie ham. Yeah, the radio. devs at No Code love some nice analog machinery. Hell yeah! Um, they also announced a Silent Hill two remake. Uh, on Unreal Engine 5 by the Bloober team. And I don't know if you guys saw some of the images out of this, but yee, they're making some interesting choices here, like how the man, the main character now just looks like a gargoyle come to life. Like his <laughs> face is perpetually dripping. And it's insane because I was seeing some of the side by side shots and he looks a 10 times better in the original. Like they just, it wasn't yeah. even like graphics. It was just like an aesthetic choice to fuck this man's face up. You mm -hmm. know? It it's funny, and the original, like, I mean, those are pre-rendered cutscenes, but like, they had mocap behind them. They were great cutscenes. Like, I thought yeah. it was all hand animated. Uh, in Silent Hill, I thought Hill, that was like, maybe I'm remembering something else. Silent Hill Two, there's mocap sessions. I made a video on it, but oh. I, I don't know if they might have just hand animated on top of the mocap sessions. Um, yeah. they might not have used. They might not have been gathering data other than visual. Um. But this that whole reveal made me like I've wanted to play the Silent Hill games, and I was like, oh, let me wait wait for a remaster or something. But now I'm just like I'm just gonna play the Silent Hill games. <laughs> like, why would I? Yeah. Wait for something like, that really doesn't like look they, good. That because the original had tank controls, right? Uh, or like the at least wonky controls. Silent Hill Two, I don't know. Silent Hill One definitely yeah. has tank controls. So it's one of those things where they didn't need to remake it. They really should have just done a remaster with better controls. Um, like, like there is a way to, to remake this and have it look fantastic. But just seeing some of the aesthetic choices in this, it was like, man, I think you're you're making yeah. some wrong choices here. Um, what then they announced uh, a Beyond Silent. Was it called Beyond Silent Hill? Is that the name of the movie they announced? Yeah, I don't care about the I movie don't know. part. Um, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up. I wanted to only bring up the remake stuff for exactly what we were talking about. It yes. just like didn't look great. Um, the Townfall stuff I'm excited for. Other things. Um, there just briefly there was a Resident Evil Four reveal stuff they did today. That game on the flip side remake looks fantastic. Uh, I am very oh, excited for that. Um, so I'm I'm still on the fence just because I only played the first hour of the original, but the original is treads a, a pretty good line between like horror and camp and i'm not really seeing camp in the in the in the remake and that's kind of my concern this is not the era of camp this is the era of I know, dark but the camp brooding. is so like again i we'll just go play i only played one. an hour of it but hearing from people re4 was really good because it was horror camp almost in like an evil dead way not quite as deliberately funny but it had a lot of weird funny stuff in it and i'm worried they're going to get rid of that with the remake by going too dark and no you can play the original because I tried to play the best version, which is called the Wii version with motion controls, and it's still dog shit. Just like play that it game on PC. is. You PC has the bad controls as well. You yeah, can apparently mod just, them to make them just slightly like better. It. Just enjoy it. Then. No, let me let me describe the shows. It's tank <laughs> controls. 
And then when you go to shoot, your body gets fixed in place, and then you're like not really yeah. aiming. You're just kind That's of Resident moving Evil Five your whole body. It's, bad. it's fine. It's, bad. it's perfectly fine. I'm excited for this. I love the remake of two. I haven't played the remake of three. I just finished another run of remake of two a couple weeks ago. So very excited for that. Uh, Resident Evil Four. Um, next up, uh, Bayonetta three. Uh, big controversy this week with the uh, original voice actor of Bayonetta saying they uh, were only offered four thousand dollars for the voice role in the new game. Uh, and they rejected that, and then they were probably replaced by Jennifer Hale. But more has come out showing that they uh, offered her... Sorry, this website does not want me to read this article. Uh, they offered her more money, and then, like, six figures, and she said no, but she broke an NDA. It's all this confusing thing. People are calling for boycotting Bayonetta 3. Um, I saw a couple rumors saying they were lowballing her because they didn't want her for this game they wanted someone else uh and they just had to offer the lowest sag rates i don't know it's weird i mostly i'm just waiting for more information to come out about this uh it it's, seems weird it's, to boycott a game off of one person's word um well it's 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 one of those situations where the voice actress came out and it's hard to parse her original statement because she didn't I can't remember her specific statement, but another voice actor chimed in and said, like, hey, the way she was stating it makes it sound like she was saying only four thousand dollars. But she was really complaining about a session rate of four thousand dollars, which lines up with what the documents Bloomberg saw, which is basically that they total offered her fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, which is more than what she kind of said in the original tweet. So it was a little bit misleading. But then there's also voice actors coming back and saying like, hey, twenty thousand dollars for the title role in a big series like Bayonetta with no uh, royalties is still bad. Like even oh, yeah. if they were offering her that. So it's one of those things where it's like. Both sides have miscommunicated. There's some obfuscation. And at the core of it, it just all gets back to the voice actor thing, which is that Chris Pratt should not be playing Mario. Voice actors should be paid and compensated more and celebrated more because they are a very unique and worthwhile art form. And they should get royalties on the back end. 100%. Do whatever you know, they want with their back end. We should probably have royalties in video games, period. I wonder if there's like any concept of royalties in video games. It's I feel like vid video games and uh, VFX artists are kind of yes. the two broadest entertainment industries that don't really get rev share or royalties. Um, yeah. You'll get, I don't get anything. <laughs> I don't get anything from my work on Elder Scrolls Online and that shit's still going but on. Who gets like, in the uh, my content's still in that game. That's true. Uh, not this is a different discussion, but even in movies, royalties only go to producers up and actors. If they have not it, right? necessarily. You can get stuff like makeup if artists writers. and stuff. If well, it I don't know what I mean. If, it's a union. Uh, I think that's um, IATSE. I think is the union that covers all all those below the line workers that aren't. Um, I'm not positive, but. Um, I know that, like, famously, the VFX house that did most of the work on Life of Pi, by the time that they won the Academy Award, they had gone out of business. Um, yeah, because they, did, so, they like, didn't the, get any Like, end, the yeah. execs, like, the folks from the VFX house went up on stage to be like, hey, this is great. We have no money because we got, we, like, they had to, like, fix a bunch of stuff at the end and they went over budget and just had to lay everybody off because yeah, they didn't yeah. get anything from I think you know best picture life of pi i'm hoping that stuff's going to change soon because it's starting to really rear its head with marvel's abuse of their vfx mm -hmm, people yes. and it, and people only pile on to say hey this vx vfx looks terrible and it's like it looks terrible because these people are overworked they're working and they're trying to do the bare weeks, minimum seven days a week yeah yep. so Thank God I yeah. never went in that career. We um, just need to pay people fair what they're worth and not get up in arms about it. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah. You're welcome. Too much He's too here. much of that profit is going to not the workers. To Bobby Cotton. Yeah. Um kill and others. No, don't, let's not kill anybody. That's a joke. 
Moving on. Uh, moving on. Uh, Bungie set to revive the marathon series in a new way. This from the hot new insider gaming. Is this? I was reading, or I guess I had seen some folks from other industry insiders who were like, "This sourcing seems fairly dubious." So, so insider gaming is from Tom Henderson, I believe, who has a track record of reliable leaks. That's not to say that this is like 100% believable, but basically he paired up with some other reliable leakers. I wouldn't say reliable leakers, but gatherer of mm -hmm. leaks. And they started Insider Gaming, which is a gaming news website focused on kind of talking about these leaks and as, as exclusives. Um, so again, take this with a big grain of salt, but I think it's a slightly less salt than just a random ass tweet you would see. Mm -hmm. But the idea here is that uh, according to sources, quote, Bungie is set to bring back the marathon series with a new game that will be a three man squad extraction based shooter. And it's in pre alpha state, um, but it could be announced at any point, given the industry's competition for talent, kind of that new wave of we're going to announce the project super early and get people interested to come work on it. Mm -hmm. Um this is kind of interesting. I only played a little tiny bit of Marathon. I think there's definitely some Marathon diehards. Bungie has has a lot of um, diehard fans who will uh, slurp up anything they put out, whether it's actually good or not. And extraction shooters are crazy popular right now. Right now with Tarkov right now. and the new uh, COD Warzone mode. So, I mean, I know Bungie's been on sense. a hiring spree for unannounced new title for like a year and a half or more. Um, oh, and I know there's lineup. been there's been speculation. People have been like, "What if it, it's like maybe like an Overwatch with like Destiny characters?" Um, <sighs> which I wouldn't be into. But what, it what seemed... fucking Destiny characters? Like Zavala like, and Ikora. There's like four distinct ones. Shax, that's Saint it. Fourteen. The Guardian, says the man who doesn't Marissa, play the video game. Aldrin, to the man who does play the video Cade game. Six. I have like what, 80, K, Asher I probably Mare. have about a, I probably have about a hundred hours in Destiny. I have and more. I, than I, I can't name anyone from Overwatch. I played like Diva. five hours. I've played <laughs> zero <laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> My point is just like, I, I, I would love to see them step away from Destiny because I feel like they're in a bit of a rut where they they built this big thing. And they've been trying to make it work for so long. And in some ways it does work, but there's a lot of things that they still haven't gotten right. And they it's, it feels like, you know, two steps forward, two steps back with every release for Destiny. And I would love for them to just get away from it and try something, quote unquote, new. So, like, yeah, uh, no, I, I never thought when I heard rumors of a, like a Destiny character based like multiplayer game, I never put much stock in that because I think I want to say Pete Parsons said that their next thing was not going to be Destiny. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I don't know if it was Peter yeah, if it said... was from someone else at Bungie because I've seen concept art for whatever this supposed next thing is. Just like environment, like scenic stuff, not yeah. anything characters or otherwise. Um, but um, so all that to say, if they are working on some sort of um, team based shooter, I would not be surprised if it's some sort of, you know, extraction marathon reboot. Um, but I also wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it's something wholly original yeah yeah there's a quote from 2019 at the end saying uh by 2025 we have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform destiny and that we have other franchises within the marketplace from uh pete parsons mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think if they were to do anything destiny related they would put it into destiny mm -hmm. um or have yeah, it as that's a good point that's why league. split that multiplayer base um yeah uh Quick hits here. Uh, Splinter Cell remake director has left Ubisoft. Uh, what do we think that means for the Splinter Cell remake? Bad. Bad is the correct answer. PlayStation showcase allegedly Yay. delayed because of Microsoft and Activision investigation. Sony, go suck a fat one. Just this let is, it happen. Just, just to dwell on this real quick. Again, rumors here. But the idea is that PlayStation had a showcase ready to go for possibly this week. But the problem was it's packed with too much like exclusive talk. And they're like, oh, shit, we really can't argue against Microsoft and the ABK acquisition and how much how this how how that exclusivity is going to uh, 
cause like reduced competition in the marketplace and then at the same time put out a showcase saying look at all this exclusive stuff to playstation so they're just sitting on it until it, it dies down and they've made their argument and then they can press it out Th that insane. silent hill stream multiple some of those games were playstation console exclusive ps5 Jeez, and it was like ah, what are you doing here um yeah. hey can we take that out of the silent hill thing can we <laughs> yeah um and then finally well, Microsoft oh, yeah. and is then building... wait a minute there was that Final Fantasy 16 trailer that came out today yeah. in the middle of nowhere, which probably should have been in a... That's... God, I love this fight so much. It's so funny. It's so stupid. I think they're realizing as soon as they fight this, then they can't. It hurts them because then they can't do any of that in the future. Yeah, um, but they have to fight it. They can't just lay down and let it happen because it's going to hurt them. So uh, this last one, Microsoft's building Xbox mobile gaming store to take on Apple and Google. Hey, call me when the ad, the store is out. I don't need this. I, you know, call me when people give a shit that the store's <laughs> out because you've done it before, you know. Um, yeah, uh, folks, that's going to be the show for this week. Jake and Ian, thank you so much for joining me. Waffles here as well. It's what waffles. a cute little boy um folks go home uh make sure you go home and go home uh make sure go you go home. to steam and you wish list total conflict resistance let Do those it. devs Do know it. that you want to play their game for ian uh go check out the case of the golden idol because i am very much looking forward to playing more of it and then finally don't play lego brick tales it's a piece of shit you garbage you can play it if you it's want it's disgusting it just jake for me. hates it he put it in his toilet and he flushed it down. Please don't scare Lego away from making video <laughs> games. <laughs> no, I would Lego, like you more good ones. <laughs> uh, my brother uh, bought two Titanics today. Um, because That's like 1200 bucks. I know. He, uh, he likes good. to resell Legos. Uh, what an on. asshole. <laughs> I know. That's literally what I said. I finished my Seinfeld. It's right there. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Ian, it's good, My isn't it? Shin Godzilla poster has shipped. Yes! You can't see my Seinfeld, but it's up there. I finished The Office, though. That that build was actually pretty fun. It had a lot of, like... It, I, the best part about the ideas is the way they, like, combine stuff to make yeah. visuals. Tell me when it, they like, released the Jerry rest Shell of the, the set. It's like a third oh, of a set. set. I know. I hope they release more. I don't have room for it. It's literally on a shelf in my bedroom, like, on top of the Break books. room in the annex, like, in the accounting department, this? quality assurance... Yeah. Daryl's office. Um, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you all next week.